Good afternoon. Good to see you all. Uh, welcome to our latest Ian Project North community conversation. Thanks for joining us on what is in Cornwall at least uh, a very sunny Friday afternoon. Um, this session uh, is focused on our neighbours in Morecambe. We have a fantastic panel uh, to speak on that subject who will be uh, introduced by our Chief Executive David Harland very shortly. Um, we are, as you may have noticed, as usual, recording this session uh, and it will be available to view um, afterwards at edenproject.com forward slash north should you wish to uh, have another look or pass it on to anyone who couldn't make it. Um, you will also on that page be able to sign up for our forthcoming sessions. Uh, our next is on uh, the 16th of July at 1pm uh, and we are about to add a schedule kind of going through the rest of the year so we will uh, make sure to keep things rolling on. Um, so just uh, a little bit of uh, an introduction of how this will work for anyone who hasn't joined us previously. Um, once our panel has uh, have all spoken, uh, we'll open up for questions. Uh, we'd love to hear from you uh, if you have anything to say um, uh, about the, the conversation or anything specifically on Eden Project North. Um, please use the participants panel uh, to raise your hand so we can see, um, see that you're ready to ask a question and we'll try and come to you in order, uh, in the order in which you put your hand up. Uh, my colleague uh, Tom here will be in charge of muting and unmuting. Um, and also any questions that are asked in the text chat uh, that we don't get to, we will answer them in writing when we publish the video shortly after this session. So I, I think that's probably enough waffle from me. Um, so over to Dave. Uh, David, uh, all yours. Thank you, Ben. And um, good afternoon from, as Ben says, a very sunny and, uh, and lovely uh, Cornwall. And um, well, today we're talking uh, neighbours in um, what must be, I guess, the sixth or so of these that, that we've done. So, uh, And we've got a, a really great panel. So uh, you'll see on your screen there, Professor Vanessa Toolman, who's the chair of the Morecambe Winter Gardens Preservation Trust, um, Fiona Lamb, who's a director of Avanti Architects, and also David Dawson, who's trustee and secretary and founding member of um, Save Grange Lido. Um, so we're going to come to them in, in just a second. And um, also online, we've got um, some of our team. So Ben's obviously just spoken and Tom, but also Emma Critchley uh, is there. And uh, a few others are uh, from the design team are, are there in the background. Um, I thought I'd just um, update you on um, where we were uh, with with all things Eden um, Project North. Um, some of you may have noticed that we had a small party uh, here last Friday. Um, and at this point last week down here in Cornwall, um, I have to say we were running around quite busily preparing for uh, the arrival of uh, the G7 leaders plus the European Union, um, plus five members of the Royal Family, three generations, in fact, uh, and um, 10 of the, I guess what you'd call the world's top business leaders uh, as well, who were part of Prince Charles's Terra Carta initiative, the Sustainable Markets uh, Initiative. Um, so it was quite a day uh, and afforded us some opportunities to talk about um, uh, a number of uh, uh, projects. Um, and top of our agenda when uh, we spoke to the Prime Minister and, uh, and his staff was, of course, Eden Project North. Uh, and we spent a good deal of time talking uh, about that. And he was obviously well briefed, knowing that he was coming to Eden uh, and was positive as regards, uh, you know, the government elements of, of, of the funding. Um, we uh, we took him around all of the of the sites, as you can imagine, in uh, in and around the event. So more on that to follow. But I think uh, as regards um, uh, the, the project in the north, it is without question that um, uh, the government has heard us, let's put it that way, and uh, we'll continue to, to, to work away on that. I think on another uh, note, uh, as you know, I always refer to this, is that we, we've been um, going through the, uh, the the design process and the planning process. Uh, we've just gone through another design freeze, uh, which is the, the last one before we share exactly where we are. Uh, and, uh, well, the truth is that we did, did this um, a couple of days ago, and... Um, it, it is really coming together nicely. It's exactly where it should be for this moment. But there was a sort of excitement in the team as we could start to really feel what the place is going to be like, how it's going to interact with the, the public realm around it uh, and, and so on. So I, I will look forward, actually, I think in the July session, we'll have the community consultation 
uh, portals all working, uh, and we'll be able to share a bit more of, of, of that then. But I, I hope you'll uh, you'll enjoy what we're uh, what we're producing. So um, that's the sort of general update today. Um, now we'll just turn to to, uh, to to neighbours. I feel like we need a theme song or something, but um, maybe not an Australian one. Um, so first up uh, is is Professor Vanessa Toulmin, who is um, Director of City and Culture at the University of Sheffield. Uh, and also a research professor in popular entertainment. Um, and rather remarkably, she was born on the Winter Gardens Fairground in, in Morecambe, and so her family has, has been uh, connected to, to the town for, for generations. Um, and what many of you will know is that following a, an external review, Vanessa was appointed as chair of the Winter Gardens Preservation Trust, um, one of our closest neighbours and... and uh, well, just a, a wonderful place, and uh, and we are huge supporters of, of all of the work that's been going on over the last, um, well, particularly the last sixteen months, where there's there's been a number of uh, funding initiatives that have seen nearly seven hundred thousand pounds towards the restoration of of the uh, the Grade Two listed theatre, um, and there's been funding in from Theatres Trust, Architectural Heritage Fund, and Historic England. So, um, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, um, unless you're in year one of a of a pretty ambitious five-year restoration and regeneration project. So, um, and we couldn't be more excited to have you as uh, as our closest neighbours. We've we've always loved the idea of a uh, of the triumvirate of yourselves, the Midland, and and uh, and ourselves there. But um, yeah, oh, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Dave. And you've just stolen my entire speech. So, thank oh, you. sorry. That's all right. No, I'm joking. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, yes, I'm the chair of the Morecambe Winter Gardens Preservation Trust. And as uh, Dave said, we've gone through an extensive external review. We've had a very difficult 18 months, as you can imagine, for pre-existing circumstances and obviously COVID and the pandemic, which has hit all uh, leisure activities. But we've got a very positive story. So I'm really going to talk about, uh, I want to show the first slide. And so uh, we are the closest neighbour to... Uh, to um, Eden project. Can we have the first slide? And, and literally show you in all the designs that wonderful, amazing building you see at the back, uh, beautifully whitely coloured, which is interesting because the original, for 75 years, the Winter Gardens was white. Uh, it's only in the last 25 years it's returned back to its terracotta. So we are less than 300 metres away from the Winter Gardens. Our balcony and our view will overlook Eden. We have a camera at the moment, which tells you all the kind of happenings on the promenade. And if you want to see inside a building, we are open every weekend. Um, so we are a grade two star listed building, which is 6% of buildings in the UK. And Eden will be split, basically situated in the middle of two of the greatest buildings that Morecambe have, both nationally acclaimed buildings. Some of the greatest designers and architects of the 20th century and the 19th century worked on both these buildings. So my question really as a good neighbour is what we can do to make our project, our five-year plan, ready for Eden. And also as a, as a good, cautious northerner, what we are not reliant on Eden happening. So we have to look at the fact that Eden is subject to funding, like we are subject to funding, and we work together to make uh, the composite bigger than, than two separate projects, but we work together. Can we have the next slide? So how can we be good neighbours? This is as you walk into the Winter Gardens. Uh, the interior and the design is quite remarkable, but it has, I have the next slide. It has a capacity of over two and a half thousand. And it was built originally as a concert hall, not as a theatre. And underground, underneath the original Winter Gardens, are the original 19th century bathhouses, uh, where you would come to Morecambe for aquatic experiences, aquarium, uh, a sea view, and tepid cold water baths. So it's a really interesting concept that we're going to have a kind of 21st version of a winter gardens across from the original historic winter gardens. And when I say that we've got to be ready, we, we, we're looking at our sustainability project now. We're looking at how we, we are a great two star listed building. There's many things we can't do um, under, and we are trying to make things more sustainable, but we couldn't wait for Eden to happen. So we've just installed new heating, which we'll get as an all year round experience. But things we want to talk about are joint programming, 
The trust will always be the custodians of the building, but we want people and investors and neighbours to come and work with us to look at programming in our building. And we want compatible, complementary programming. Uh, we're not going to turn the winter gardens into something that will take away from the wider Eden experience. So it's very important to us that the programming in this building adds to everything that people want to come to Morecambe to. Secondly, we also want to create a more sustainable environment within our cafe space, but also to our visitors. So we're very interested in what the landscaping around the promenade is going to be between Eden, between the Midland and between the Winter Gardens. And thirdly, we're, we're part of a neighbourhood of really incredible buildings along the promenade. There's other neighbours, um, there's other historic buildings in Morecambe that don't have the benefit that the Morecambe Winter Gardens has as a grade two star listed building. Uh, and part of our renovation and in feasibility studies that we're doing over the next six months is looking at how one third of the building, which is not the theatre, can we have the next slide? This here is what is known uh, to Morecambe people as the gods. And this part of the building, we're looking at turning the Winter Gardens into an all year round music venue. The bottom of the building will be standing and the second and third tier will be seating. That incredible ceiling that you're looking at is the largest expanse of fibrous plaster ceiling in the country. The Winter Gardens Morecambe was known as the Albert Hall of the North, Elgar, the Halley Orchestra, the Liverpool Philharmonic, so Malcolm Sargent, all of these people appeared in the Winter Gardens. So acoustically, it's got some of the greatest acoustics of any building in the North. So the potential is there to tap onto the programming that Eden North will do, the outdoor arena. We could be a wet weather solution. We could also be a programming adjunct to some of the main things you want to do. But also we have to look at a standalone economic plan that by the time in our ambitious five-year plan, that we have an all year round two and a half thousand capacity music venue with a sustainable plan and an offer that is more than just the locals, but will actually help and keep local talent in Morecambe. I'm of that generation of the 1980s who left Morecambe because there was nothing here for me. I hope that Eden and all the work that we can do in Morecambe will keep young talent and people in Morecambe to have the opportunities that I only had by leaving my home resort. That's it. Thank you, um, Vanessa. Um, that was that was wonderful. I mean, what a what a place it is. It never ceases to amaze me how how beautiful uh, it it still is. And um, just hearing a little bit of the of the story is wonderful. And um, I, I I love I, I I'm glad we've recorded this because I'm going to play your section to our architects with um, and and say look no pressure then about being located between the Winter Gardens and and. Uh, uh, and the Midland, two of the country's finest architectural examples. So that that will that will uh, ensure that they uh, really uh, keep an eye on this. And I think you're, you you talked a little bit about landscape landscape in the public realm, and I think we'll probably come back to to that as well because it's something that we're very um, conscious of. Um, and you close with a sentiment that we really hold dearly, which is is about. Uh, you know, rather like Cornwall, that this is a is is a place where we must nurture, um, you know, young talent so that they can start a career in this location rather than um, have to have to leave. Very much like the stories that we've we've told here before, um, and uh, it, it's it, it's been really um, actually joyful to have um, groups like Northwest Youth for Eden uh, and others really, uh, you know, getting behind this and and um, and seeing the opportunity. So. Uh, Yes, um, thank you. Uh, that that was a great start. We'll we'll move on to um, to Fiona. Um, so Fiona Lamb is a is a director of Avanti Architects, uh, and I think leads um, that practices conservation work. Um, and uh, she's an accredited conservation architect with with more than twenty years of of experience in conservation and. Um, transformational reuse of, of, uh, of you know, listed and uh, modern movement buildings that include buildings designed by Gwyn Sterling and, and Oliver Hall. So, and Fiona was responsible for the for the very successful, as we said, uh, restoration of the Grade One listed Isicon Flats in London, which uh, won the Reba Crown Estate Conservation Award. 
Um, and people have said some nice things about that, Fiona. It says here that it was an outstanding example of creative conservation, securing a sustainable future for a grade one listed building that was at risk. Don't get much better than that, does it? So uh, the, the, with that intro, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Dave. Thank you. Hi. So um, I was invited uh, today to come and talk to you um, as Chris Richardson, actually, from the Lancaster Foundation, who currently own um, the Midland Hotel, is on leave. But um, I have been involved with the Midland um, since 2003, interestingly. Um, but many of you will know, I mean, most of you will know that Mid the Midland Hotel is the, the most significant 20th century building in Morecambe. And in fact, one of the most significant art deco buildings of its type in England. Um, so, it was, you know, I, I think it, it would be help just to give you a bit of a background because I think it's really interesting um, that it was commissioned, obviously, by the London Midland and Scottish Railway Hotel Services in 1932 um, and strategically located uh, to attract the wealthy middle class of, of, of the time from the north of England that it captured and included the day trippers um, from Manchester and the surrounding cities. Um, but also including um, people passing uh, north and south from Scotland, um, which is where I'm from. Um, and Oliver Hill was commissioned um, uh, back in 1932 to design a hotel with 40 rooms um, and to embody the spirit of the modern, which I think really describes the building very well um, with its um, curved plan facing west towards the sea. Um, it's arranged, as you as you probably all know, around this fantastic central stair drum and includes um, art and sculpture um, commissioned by Hill by Eric Gill and Revilius and originally textile design by Marion Dorn. And so when it was open, it was highly popular, it was hugely popular. Um, and unfortunately, that its initial success in the late 30s was curbed by the outbreak of war and interestingly it was converted and used as a hospital during that period um, and then uh, it returned to its original use um, after the war um, and then latterly after the shortly after that sold by the railways um, and then passed through a series of owners um, and sustained a kind of series of alterations over that time um, but in, in 19, I think, 76, it was listed grade two star. Um, so we're sitting alongside uh, Vanessa's um, fantastic grade two star listed building too. Um, but by the late 80s, um, it was obviously noticeably deteriorating um, and uh, passing through various owners. And there were several um, attempts at refurbishing it, one by a company called Kyber Leisure, which... Um, was unsuccessful. And then um, you will know that Urban Splash acquired it in 2003. And actually that's when I first um, visited the building um, when it was in fairly derelict condition. Um, uh, and we were commissioned by Urban Splash to record its condition and assess its significance and essentially describe um, and put down a statement of significance to which, under, which basically explains um, why why it's so important both um, socially, architecturally and historically. Um, so we um, undertook that research, uh, documented the building as it was and then supported Urban Splash and, and Union North, their, their architects, to undertake the very extensive refurbishment that, that they undertook. Um, and it is, uh, uh, of which um, is, very um, comprehensively documented. Um, and then Urban Splash sold um, the, the hotel in 2011, which is where the Lancaster Foundation um, comes in. They sold it to them and um, Chris Richardson, the development director, who's who I said was unable to attend, has just uh, asked me to read out a few words on their behalf to explain who they are in case anyone doesn't know. So they're, they're extremely excited to hear that Eden is coming to the Morecambe which we believe has the potential to transform the town and provide fantastic opportunities for education, commerce, employment, and well-being generally to the region. The, the Lancaster Foundation are a little known UK registered charity based in Clitheroe, but quietly impactful on over 80 charitable projects each year across the UK and Africa, mainly 
mainly aimed at young people. They're very proud to own the historic and architecturally acclaimed Midland, which has been operated by English Lakes Hotel for the last 10 years, um, who incidentally own a number of hotels in the area. In early 2021, this year, um, as Eden North stepped towards reality, uh, the Lancaster Foundation engaged Avanti um, Architects. And as explained, we have special, we are specialized, we specialize in working with modern listed buildings. Um, and we are currently exploring reconfiguration expansion concepts that are complementary um, within the Midland site footprint. We have had um, early meetings with the planners and we're looking to move to a formal approach, uh, pre-application approach later in the summer. The Lancaster Foundation have seen early designs of the Eden North. We've been in conversation with their design team and are very excited about the potential impact of the two developments side by side on the Morecambe seafront. That's all there is from me. <coughs> Thank you, Fiona. So uh, another lovely run through of uh, another wonderful building, So, uh, which I'm sure many people will know um, well and who are in, are in the audience. And uh, I see on the chat that, uh, um, Vanessa and the team have been um, sharing uh, ways of, uh, of of getting tours and uh, and so on with it being open every weekend and uh, I hope that people will go and um, have a glass in one of your lovely bars there in the Midland or one of the guys lovely uh, uh, bars so um, so thank you for that um, so uh, so having dealt with the immediate neighbours we thought we'd go across across the water slightly uh, and um, the the save the Grange uh lido project and uh david dawson is is joining us um having having joined uh that organization in in late 2018 and then um i think it's now a a, a community benefit society if i'm not mistaken david so that you that you incorporated so um and um you obviously didn't look away at the right moment because you've ended up being the society secretary as well as a trustee so which i always think is the is the the job that is the hardest so uh and uh um, but you've been involved with all the negotiations uh, since since then. Um, and I'm told that you're a clinical ne negligence solicitor in your other life, but that, that shouldn't allow us to put you off. But, you know, maybe you'll get some interesting questions on the on the chat as well on, on, on that. Um, and uh, we're, we're really looking forward to this as a project that's that's uh, dear to our hearts as well. Over to you. Thank you. Um, yes, we're, we're a community benefit society with charitable objects and we're run entirely by volunteers, a lot of very hardworking people, and we're determined to uh, make Grange Lead a splash again. I'll give you a little bit of background first of all. Um, 1932, the Lido was built and opened with a great fanfare. You'll see how successful the opening ceremony was from August the 18th of that year. Um, it ran very successfully during the 20th century, but closed in somewhat mysterious circumstances in 1993. And it's been pretty much neglected since then. There's a very long and complex history behind that neglect, but uh, I'll skip through that because we haven't got much time. Um, I'll move to 2011 when our founder, Phil Bradby, managed to secure a grade two listing of the Lido. We haven't got that precious star, but at least we've got a listing. Um, the listing was in response to plans to redevelop the site without a pool. Um, the developers after the listing pulled out, and then throughout the decade, there were a number of consultations and reports commissioned by the owners of the site, South Lakeland District Council. They pondered what they could do with what's a very important cultural and heritage asset. Um, our voice grew louder in 2018 when there were plans to fill in the pool and we launched a petition addressed to the council to, to ensure that we could get it restored with water in the pool basin. And that petition secured over 18,000 signatures from far and wide. They opened the door to our engaging in constructive discussions with the council um, which have brought us to where we are today. And where we are today is a two-phased approach to the restoration work. SLDC has committed almost three million pounds to the work needed to make the site safe and accessible, and are working with us to, to give us time to raise 
the three and a half million pounds we need to proceed with the full restoration, including what would be the only 50 metre swimming pool in Cumbria. Um, the council's work on their first phase is due to start in the autumn and it's going to take 12, 18 months, we think. Um, it's going to include some infilling of the pool basin because at the moment it's, it's too deep for us to properly manage and safely manage, uh, but it's going to be of a depth that will ensure that we can host county level swimming events. Uh, the slide shows an early visualisation of our plans. Uh, we have moved on a little bit since then in that the new two storey extensions to the main pavilion here um, are now going to be single storey with roof terraces. Um, we plan to have a gym, community rooms, changing places, facility, and a cafe and restaurant in the main pavilion, which will have these fantastic views across the bay. While the council progresses with phase one, we're working hard to get our plans and the funds in place to deal with the pool restoration, and it will make the Lido the only fully functioning Lido on the northwest coast. All being well, we'll be ready to begin phase two at the end of SLDC's work, but we do have a plan B in case we haven't quite raised the money by then. Where does all this fit in with Eden? Um, there's so much synergy between us. Grange Open Air Bathing Pool, as it was first known as, built in 1932. And in the 1930s, there was a period during which many, many outdoor pools were constructed throughout the UK. This is the Morecambe Super Swimming Stadium. This opened in 1936 at a ceremony hosted by the Governor of the Bank of England. And this is the site on which Eden North will be built. The pool in Morecambe closed in 1975 and was demolished the following year. All of the other coastal leaders in the Northwest went the same way apart from Grange. We lost Lytham, uh, New Brighton, Blackpool, and there was even one on Walney Island in Barrow. So Eden's on the site of the Super Swimming Stadium, but the Art Deco connection continues because as you've heard, it's slap bang next to the Midland Hotel. We've been discussing with members of the Eden team since spring 2019, I think we began talking to you. And we think the two projects really complement one another. Together, they'll bring a major boost to the economy of the Bay. We've talked about joint promotion and ticketing. You imagine the attraction of visitors spending the morning at the Eden Project and then getting on a train around the bay to enjoy a swim in the Lido in the afternoon. Unfortunately, this little pest has slowed things down for us and for everybody else. Uh, there's so much opportunity now, though, for us to build back better and create a cross-bay collaboration, which will bring jobs, sustainability, health and well-being benefits for the whole of the community in and around North Lanx and South Cumbria. Our friends from Eden have visited the Lido several times. Their visits always last longer than they expect because the place is just so evocative. Cy Bellamy said when he came that the Lido was too precious to lose. And Tim Nery was the most recent visitor to be blown away by the potential of what we hope can be Eden's swimming offer. I'm just going to finish with uh, a plug for our fundraising. Have a look at our website. You can see our uh, range of merchandise and details of the Friends of Grange Lido scheme and the support from them will help us make the splash that we want to. Thank you. Great stuff. We love a metaphor on these calls, David. So uh, you had a few there. It's a, it's a great, uh, great project. There's lovely um, connection. But I, I, I've been enjoying the chat where people said I learned to slip swim there and I had the the same, which will make Ben Foster smile, because he and I came from the same area with, with a place called Carline Bay, which had a very small one, not as nice as yours, that has long gone, but another Art Deco uh, Lido style uh, building. There's a there's a fabulous one down in Penzance, and um, there's a uh, called the Jubilee Pool now, um, which actually has got geothermal power uh, now and um, has, has reopened with some success. So there's clearly a market, isn't there, for for, for these types of things um as well so um we are big supporters of yours as you as you know as as we are of uh of the winter gardens and uh and, and everything else there so 
Now, there's there's been lots on the chat. I should have mentioned at the start our delight that the shrimps won. Uh, that was just mentioned, the, uh, the Morecambe Town uh, and their um, success. Um, so we've had fleeting contact with the football club to answer that question as we go by, but um, we're, we're delighted um, to uh, to see that. I think we put a, a post out on our social media um, when that uh, that all went through. And um, there's lots of other threads which are sort of general Edenness, and perhaps we'll come back to those at the end if we've got any time uh, around um, the geothermal project down here, which I can tell you as of this morning is has managed to get to 832 metres uh, precisely down on its journey to 4.7 uh, kilometres. So uh, it's currently on, on track. Um, but Ben, I think um, uh, I'll thank our three speakers. They're going to stay with us and um, we'll see if there's any questions. Thank you, Dave, and thank you to everyone. Um, uh, and I'd also like to uh, voice my enthusiasm for outdoor swimming as well really fantastic in the jubilee pool if any of you are ever down in in cornwall uh and uh, and want to check out fantastic lida it really is a, a lovely a lovely day out down there um so uh oh, one other thing we should mention before we go to questions is um you uh, obviously people who know the area well will know that the rnli uh are also uh close neighbors of um uh, eden project north uh, and uh we um but they sent their apologies for this session. Uh, and we'll try and uh, we'll try and get them involved in in a future conversation uh, if possible. We just couldn't make it work uh, from a practical point of view. Um, so if uh, you have a question you'd like to ask, please do throw your hands up um, in the participants menu. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, and it's always um, more engaging when we can hear people ask their questions live um, over the video. So if you anyone who does have anything to ask please do that and uh, and we will come to you and and unmute you as required and uh, oh there we go Stephen Parks um uh Tom if you wouldn't mind just uh unmuting Stephen there we'll uh and Stephen when you're unmuted if you could uh, ask your question please oh okay thanks um good to see you all again I've been following your zoom meetings with interest here from the Isle of Wight um and um, I was curious to politely ask, most politely, um, last time there was a meeting a few months ago, you were a bit short on the funding side and um, you were trying to apply for some more government funding. I just wondered where, if is it polite of me to ask where, where you've got to with um, Boris and his friends uh, with that aspect? I'm very happy to cover that, Stephen, and um, it, it's not impolite at all. Us British, we don't like to talk about money, do we? But um, uh, let us do it for a moment. So um, we are in really um, active dialogue with with both uh, politicians and what they call the, the officers of government. Uh, and um, we, we obviously had the Prime Minister here at Eden um, for around five hours uh, last Friday. Uh, and he expressed his um, positivity uh, for for the scheme, which I think is important. It's now a case of just continuing the dotting the i's, crossing the t's, and and so on of uh, of, of the wider business case. Um, and we've always been targeting something in the autumn around the comprehensive spending reviews. One of the problems of this of this project, and and we are not alone in this, is that um, as we come out of the of the pandemic, um, the the government have rightly been focused on what are effectively one year plans so they take us through to the to the rest of the year whereas this you know this project is a multi year actually multi ministry project so there's a good argument for it to run through three or four of of different government ministries um and i, I think the key is that the government now need to identify exactly how those schemes can be funded um so that's the the conversation that we're in uh and um but but I think, as I said right at the start of the call, uh, we've definitely been heard, and there's definitely support within within central government. Is this is, you know, for us at Eden, this is a case of when, as opposed to if, that we do the project, um, and uh, we're looking at various contingencies and so on to keep the to keep the project on track. Hmm. Thank you. Um, Greetings to the Isle of Wight as well. Yes, well, there's mention of there's been mention, as you probably know, of a smaller version of the project over here in Sandown Bay. I'm not quite sure where that's actually got to at the moment because we've had a, a change of uh, 
uh, council administration uh, from Conservative to Independent Alliance. So I think the whole thing, I think you, you were involved, weren't you, uh, with the Isle of Wight, with uh, Councillor Debbie Andre at one stage. Did you I have some... Mi- I think that's long ago, but um, but possibly, so certainly not recently, but um, an Isle that we love. Yes. Well, if um, if anyone's interested, I'm here. So uh, <laughs> maybe maybe we can resurrect. I'd quite like to look at a smaller version over here, the p- potential of that. But uh, we'll Excellent. see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Great. Um, thanks for the thanks for the question, Stephen, and the plug for the Isle of Wight. Well, thanks very much. Good luck with all your uh, future. You know work and i'm looking forward to coming to see that actually i as i work also um semi-retired from the music and leisure industry recording sound engineer theater such like i actually played i was on a uk tour uh, as front of house sound engineer with over there at morecambe theater um and morecambe bay and wasn't that wonderful to see that wonderful uh, building and that's hopefully going to become part of the culture and the music and the whole project over there. So I wish you well with Thank that. You. And that was a wonderful presentation from the lady. It certainly was. Thank you, Stephen. So uh, <laughs> Ben, back to you. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, obviously, Isle of Wight got fantastic music heritage. I've been to the festival there. Really brilliant, uh, brilliant place to see music. Um, uh, so please do, uh, we, we don't have any hands currently up. Actually, we do, as I say that. It's our friend Alistair. Um, Tom, if you could uh, do the honours on the on the unmuting, Alistair. You know the drill when you're ready. Off you go. Yeah, yeah. And first of all, just thank you for your work uh, during the G7 last week. I think that was an important uh, uh, place to air your views on uh, Eden North. So thank you for your efforts on that. But just on the subject of neighbours, um, You've obviously had experience of this in Cornwall, but what does it mean to Eden to be a good neighbour? How can we be good neighbours to, to Eden? Al, I don't know if it was just me, and it might have been, but I only got half your question. So would you mind just saying it again? I'm really sorry. Sorry, yeah. I was saying you've had experience of uh, Cornwall, obviously, and what does it mean to be a good neighbour to Eden? How can we be good neighbours to you? I'm conscious what it's like when you have a bad neighbour. Uh, we would like to be good neighbours. How can we be good neighbours uh, to Eden? Oh, you're turning it round on us. So, uh, well, I, I think um, the, I, I think the key is open and transparent dialogue. And what's been great of it, you know, just just listening to both Vanessa and Fiona and knowing the, the, the guys at the Midland, but also the whole the whole area is is people engaging in an open. Um, and transparent way about their plans, about what they um, see that the, that the future uh, can bring. And I think over the course of the last, um, you know, few of these sessions, we've had all sorts of different uh, groups and people coming along. Um, and we've talked, haven't we? Uh, we certainly talked about it on the business forum and the education one about our our actual joy about about not having to retrofit a lot of this sort of stuff, you know, as we did in Cornwall, because actually people are getting if you like, ready for the um, uh, for, for what's going to going to happen. Um, so, and I think it therefore works work both both ways. I think understanding everybody else's plans out, you know, um, is 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 critical. But I don't know if any of the Eden team want to add anything to uh, to that, Ben or Blair or anyone like that, or one of our panel perhaps. I think um, it's Blair. Um, I, a lot of our events working together supply staff um being a village hall uh for the area all of these things are very important and it's a two-way relationship it shouldn't be about you being good neighbors to us or us being good neighbors to you we want to become part of the community that is our focus for eden project north and all the eden project sites we're creating so um, it really does become a long-term partnership and relationship. And uh, that's what we hope to get out of this, um, is, is new friends, new neighbours, and we, we get on well together. Fantastic. Does anyone else want to jump in and, and, and talk, talk on that? Uh, 
in the Dean team of, of Nashville, and Fiona? No, okay. They're, okay. They're sh they're, they've gone shy. <laughs> Thank you uh, for the question. Um, uh, uh, and, and thanks, Dave, as well, uh, for uh, Dave and Blair. Um, we have a couple of hands up. Uh, Nick, you were first. So, uh, Tom, if we could go to Nick Dagger, please. Oh, hey, guys. Uh, I was just wondering if you've had any communications with, obviously, we've had a change of council lead here. Um, and I'm just making sure that uh, the local council is still aligned with the Eden plans, or if there's any communication been, uh, been happening with that one. Yeah, Nick, of course, we've um, observed the, the, the changes um, and um, we have, we, we're in touch. Um, if I say constantly, it makes it sound like it's, you know, kind of all the time, doesn't it? So, uh, but we're certainly in regular dialogue with, with all the, uh, the, the, the councils and the local enterprise partnership and so on. Um, and um, I'm actually coming up to, uh, to Morecambe at the end of the month. So we're, we're meeting face to face uh, then. So, uh, but there is no, uh, no sense of any change of direction uh, at all, Nick. Actually, the opposite. Super. Very exciting to hear. Thank you. Right. All right. Thanks, Nick. Uh, thanks, Dave. Uh, Colin uh, is next up. Colin Peacock. Uh, Tom, if you could do the honours, please. Yeah. I mean, Hi, Colin. What's your question? Yeah. Um, one of my great memories is of the of when the kids were very little was the Interschools Music Festival, which was held in the Winter Gardens. So my daughters, aid and Nei to a duck, was stood on the big plat, the big stage, reciting and singing, etc. To everyone. So you know, to to restore that sort of community event, it covered all the schools around the whole of the district, would be wonderful. Well, uh, thank you. Do you want to answer, Dave? Yeah, please do. Um, Morecambe Winter Gardens was actually built as a music venue. It was built for the music, the International Music Festival, which that is um, Europe. So um, it's my aim to have Morecambe Winter Gardens not just as a music concert venue, but also looking at areas. I mean, in Sheffield, where I am, we have the Music Hub, which is. Um, actually educates 21,000 children who take music exams across the whole of Sheffield. So, and there's nothing similar in the north of England to look at that congregation of like music from every level, from learning at school to performing, to being linked in. So I think there's great potential. What I have to do first, I'm very honest about this, is get the Winter Gardens on an economic footing. We have to pay four and a half thousand pounds a month just to keep standing. That is our cost before we even open the doors. Uh, we have no, we don't get funding from the council. We don't get, I'm not asking for funding from the council, I should add. We are very self-independent in that way. So when we get that economic footing, we will look at a community development strand. But I think really having a kind of unified hub around the Winter Gardens as music for everyone, more music and some of the local community groups, but being ambitious, I think Morecambe needs to be more ambitious. And I think Eden North, is a sign of that ambition. So I want the Winter Gardens to be just as ambitious as that. In terms of neighbours, Dave, you talk about the North West. Morecambe, half of Morecambe was built by Yorkshire money. And, you know, my neighbours in Yorkshire are not that, um, got a new reputation for being a bit tight. But actually in terms of Morecambe, I can tell you in our fundraising that the second largest group of people who put money into our crowdfunding site, we're from West Yorkshire. So don't forget, and there's still the best train from Morecambe to Leeds, a bit slow, but it's the only direct route uh, out of um, out of Morecambe, out of Lancashire to Yorkshire is that train uh, from the coast. So don't forget West Yorkshire and Bradford and Leeds. Those people have, Morecambe was known as Bradford by the Sea or um, Bradford. So the, And the Winter Gardens was built by Bradford businessmen. Half of the West End was built by Bradford and Yorkshire businessmen and women. So that link to the West, to Yorkshire, is a fundamental part of Morecambe's ecology and still is uh, mm -hmm. by the amount of people who fundraised and contributed to our fundraising campaign. The second largest outside Morecambe was Bradford. So I, I quite agree. I mean, I think um, a couple of links have just been put up to the Morecambe Bay curriculum by um, uh, by Sue and, and others. 
which is obviously a link. I think, if I remember rightly, there's 462 schools within a very short driving radius as well. So the idea that one can use these these central points as, as somewhere where this stuff uh, happens, so whether it's for, for school children or anyone else, I mean, uh, I think regardless of the politics, seeing the G7 come to, to, to Cornwall and then the impact, uh, the positive impact around on the place and the idea that we could have events like that, you know, in the Northwest is is just um, fascinating. I also, Colin, I don't know if knee high to a duck is a phrase in the North, but it's brilliant. I'm adopting it. It's not one I use, but it's now, that's marvellous. So uh, that's made my day. So uh, thank you for that. Um, shall we go to Ezra next, Ben? Uh, yes, I was just going to say, Sue, uh, did you want to come in? You said you couldn't raise your hand in the chat. No? Okay. No. Just wanted to make sure. Uh, um Ezra, uh, Tom, if you could uh, do the unmute, unmuting, please. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Excellent. So I, this is the first time I've attended um, one of these meetings. I, I just think it's really exciting. Um, just to briefly talk about um, what I do. Um, so I, as a boy, I planted a... Um, a temperate rainforest garden up um, in Tatum Fells, um, not far from Morecambe. Um, and that's quite mature now. Uh, I'm 48. And, um, and my parents on that site have um, an art gallery in an old ancient farmhouse, and it's absolutely beautiful. And um, I live in London at the moment, but I'm I would like to relocate back, um, back up there um, and start the next phase of my life. <laughs> um, and I just wondered, I've always, it's been my ambition all through my life to be somehow involved with the Eden Project. Um, and I just wondered if there is a way in which I can be involved. So. Great. And um, so there's a question we get asked a, a lot, uh, Ezra, and uh, the, the answer is um, a resounding yes, that quite possibly is. Um, and without doing an interview live, um, what, what I would suggest is after the call um, that uh, you get hold of Emma Critchley, who's there, and she'll probably be um, sending you a chat message with her, uh, her details uh, on there. And we've got um, we've got quite a list and uh, of, of of people wanting you to get involved. Uh, and as the project develops, that becomes more and more real as time goes on. So um, I hope that uh, you know is is helpful, um, and we'll look forward to continuing the dialogue. Lovely. That's that's very good. Okay. Great. So uh, super job. So uh, thank you, Ezra. Yes, Thanks, Ezra. Thanks, Dave. Um, David uh, is up next. Um, Tom, if you could do the unmuting. Hi, David. Hello, question, please. Thank you for having me on board. Um, this is my first time attending over here. I find it interesting. So please do forgive me if I'm covering something or asking something that's already been covered in previous meetings. Um, I am interested in what is happening with the boarded off area next to Little as to or LB as to what the plans are for that area, because obviously it's a slight eyesore at this point, but I'm guessing that there must be some plans. In the Thank you very much. Okay, um, that's not one that I know the answer to uh, at all, because um, I don't think it's connected to us. Emma, um, I'm looking at you, but maybe unfairly uh, on that. I'm, I'm, I'm not entirely sure which area you're talking about. Could you just clarify that? And I might be able to answer, I might not. It's, um, I think it's Little, I might be mistaken, Little or Aldi, it's where the old train station used to be. There's a whole section that's boarded off with blue boarding. And it's some Frontier, it's Frontierland. Frontierland. Yeah. Okay, so so that 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 bit's easy for us to say that that... that doesn't have anything to do with the site that we're talking about. We're obviously aware of that uh, of that site, um, but I don't think we can add anything more on this forum unless Emma is feeling. The only thing that I'd say is that it's something we're talking to the council about that's very much on their radar. But no, we haven't got any direct involvement. 
that's on their radar, but have you got any ideas or anything like that that, that might be able to use it to benefit the more uh, Eden project? No, no kind of concrete ideas at the moment. But I mean, we're aware of it. Sorry, I couldn't quite couldn't quite work out where you went between Lidl and Aldi. But yeah, that is something that we are talking to the council about. I think what I would say, I think what I would say more generally, David, is that that you know, obviously, quite a lot of land and and various things are in both public <laughs> and um, private uh, ownership, and so there's constant dialogue about how they could be used going forward. Um, and what we've talked about before is that that this project needs to be a catalyst for other things to to come in behind it. If it's just Eden that comes in, we'll have failed. So you know, frontier land is something that you know the town. You know, you talk to people; they they you know everybody talks about that site at, at some point or other. Um, and uh, you know what what then happens to it is is important. Is it directly connected with what we're doing? No, but could it become you know part of a uh, something that's catalyzed and a, and a change that's going forward then then absolutely so and that would apply to to, to numerous sites a, a around the town so um but we'll raise it next time we we see them that, that it came up here i was just thinking along the lines of complementary and i think that would be very beneficial yeah great thank you thank you thanks, david. david uh and, and uh thanks david emma um steve is up next i believe uh, Steve, when you're unmuted, if you could uh, pose your question, please. Oh, <laughs> not quite there on the unmuting yet. Tom, Tom, have you done what you can do there? Okay. Oh, there we go. Yeah, Hi, Steve. yeah thanks for that. Sorry about that. Okay, um, so just brief introduction. I'm the technical kind of aspect, I suppose, uh, freelance IT manager. Uh, I've enjoyed working with uh, the Morecambe Winter Gardens on their uh, project, uh, the initial project in the last sort of 12 months, uh, first phase of the, the renovation works, and I appreciate the support from Emma. I've talked to Emma Critchley regarding social media posting of things, etc. So, so the Eden have helped us out along the front with with those kind of things. So that's great. Um, I think working together is a key thing. I mean, I'm a local guy, um, I'm passionate about what's going on in Morecambe. Uh, I've been involved with Morecambe BNI, which is the business network group. We turned over four million pounds of the business locally um, when I was president of that, which was excellent to see. And now I'm helping out with uh, Morecambe Bid, uh, which I know, uh, David, you've been in touch with John O'Neill and, and the rest of us at various levels. So that's great to see. But um, I think it is kind of uh, working together from a technology point of view, working smartly, ticketing systems. I think last time I talked to uh, someone at the Eden, they were on about they'd changed their ticketing systems. So going from a traditional system, the pandemic's forced us to be smarter. So time ticketing, uh, different events where you move on to another event at a different time in the day, time slots, et cetera, that, that's gonna be key. But what's the big step that you think that uh, Eden uh, have got to make? Uh, what's the next big step? Because obviously you mentioned the autumn funding, but there's the transportation, there's the ticketing, there's a lot of things I can see that are kind of quite complex parts of the project. What's the next big hurdle is my question, uh, David? Uh, planning. <laughs> so in, in short, so the planning application will go in shortly um, and we'll probably... Um, kick me under the virtual table, but I think we're we're meant to be opening the uh, the, the sort of consultation window. I probably used the wrong phrase um, in in early July, uh, and yeah, yeah um, and then um, I, I think then the other piece is is then the funding. You know, we will um, by the end of this year uh, we'll have sort of exhausted our development funds, and we actually need to turn the project into um, you know the the reality. So we need we need um, if you like the big commitments in uh, during that phase. Now that's all to plan. So at the moment that was always the the, the plan of where we were going, um, and then you know no reason to think that we won't. But um, we just need a few things to go in the in the right order. But right now our focus is on that that planning application and um, uh, dealing with that. Okay, that's great. And is it at the point where it's had some feedback yet, David, or not? Are you still just about to? So that's what I was referring to. So, uh, so from from early July, we'll be putting that out for for um, for public um, scrutiny and 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 for for comment. Well, best of luck. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Uh, thank you, Dave. Uh, next up, uh, I'm, I'm aware we're running out of time, but we'll we'll get through as many as we can. Uh, Mark Cullen, uh, Tom, if you could be honest, please. <coughs> Hi, Mark. 
Hello there. Uh, my my interest is, um, I suppose, in terms of neighbourhoods, is how do you identify sort of neighbours and neighbourhoods? And um, I, I used to run a website called uh, In Morecambe Bay. And one of the problems I had was actually, and my background's geography, is how do you identify all these little bays around the around the promenade? And when you ask the council or whatever, the the understanding is is either north or south. Uh, uh, south promenade um, but it doesn't really help identify the little inlets the the different characteristics of the beach beaches and so when you talk about neighbours then you have a like a three mile of beach and lots of different environments without any identity but they are quite distinct and I just wonder if there's an opportunity there to Try and help create more of a um, an identity along the promenade for for these environments. Mm -hmm. um, thinking about Cornwall, you have every little bay will have a name and its characteristics recognised, and uh, Morecambe seems to lack that. That's a, that's a really lovely and interesting thought, actually, uh, Mark, because. Um, you're right. They they do. They all have great little names in 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 Cornwall. And when you walk, you know, if you walk from our site in either direction, you come across you know a huge variety of different natural environments. Which, by the way, is partly what the project's about about bringing to life what's there under our noses. And um, whether I'd be brave enough to suggest naming them or renaming them, Go on. <laughs> uh, you know, I think I think that might be that might be dangerous. But um, the idea that that one could focus uh, in the right way in bringing those to life. Uh, and and being clear on, on what is happening actually in front of people's eyes, um, and were were Sam here, who's our head of creative, who reports to Blair. He he talks a lot about people becoming great noticers, uh, i.e., you know, recognizing what's around them and and uh, therefore acting a little bit uh, differently. So um, I think that's a lovely thought and one that, that we'll um, we'll put into the melting pot uh, as well. So um, thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, thanks, Dave. Uh, right, we have one, one more. Uh, so one, yeah, one more. I think we can do. Uh, so Nicola, uh, when you're unmuted, if you could uh, ask a question, please. Oh, hello, hello, everyone. Yeah. Um, yeah, really excited about this project. Thank you for doing these sessions. It's it's fascinating to hear everything. Um, Winter Gardens. I'm definitely going to go and visit there. Um, as a gardener. I see a massive potential in involving people locally. And I was thinking maybe some kind of competition. So um, I live in Haitian, which is obviously within the Morecambe area. Um, there's some beautiful gardens here. People really do take care of their own homes. Um, and I'm thinking, it, what kind of plans are there for anything like that? Any kind of um, sort of competitions or involvement for local people so that, you know, to sort of bring up awareness, I suppose. So um, uh, the, the, sh <laughs> the shorter answer is yes. I mean, at the moment, we're very focused, as I said to the, the question before, on, on planning and various other bits. Um, but we've got a really, um, uh, you might have seen in the local media that we, we're part of a, uh, of a bid, uh, which is around social prescribing with the local Na Nature Trust and the NHS. And that's a good example of, of organisations kind of coming together to, to get people to focus on, you know, health and well-being and their own little um uh, and their own part of, uh, of of what they're doing, and you're not wrong by the way. I can't remember the name of the pub. Um, in in um, you've now maybe I can never remember if it's Haitian or Hisham. I, I, this is, this is People dreadful. say it differently. <laughs> well, I, you, know, you, you just yeah, okay. So uh, that's what I thought. But they, but when you walk through, actually from Morecambe, and you walk to the to the pub there, there are some fantastic gardens as as you go through, um, and so the idea that we can link all of these things together, and if you like. Um, were Jane, who's our landscape architect on, she'd be talking about sort of green spines and green ways running through. And you've already got some great um, public infrastructure in terms of the promenade and, uh, you know, the cycleways and so on. So the thought that we can we can really, uh, you know, uh, you know, greenify, Edenize, whatever, you know, whatever verb you want to use, uh, that that is what we would would like to be part of, um, assuming that everyone wants to be part of it. So um, so the answer is yes uh to, to to all of that and um we'll put that idea in the melting pot as well nicola so thank you thank you 
Thank you, Nicola. Thank you, Dave. Um, uh, it's one minute past two, so we are out of time, I'm afraid. These sessions seem to go quicker and quicker every time. Um, so thank you to all of our contributors and, of course, to our fantastic panel. Um, it's been it's been great talking to you all. Um, anything we haven't had a chance to answer, we will um, answer in writing, which will be published alongside the video of this session, which will go live shortly. Um, please do have a look at edenproject.com forward slash north. Uh, our next session is on the 16th of July uh, at 1 p.m. And uh, we hope to see you there. Uh, and uh, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. And uh, come on, England, uh, this evening. I hope there's a few football fans in here. And uh, we'll see you next time. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Cheers, Ben. Bye, everyone.